Ah, Dios, sí. Like that. Can't touch this. Oh. You can't touch this. But if you do, this is what uh, this is how the system works. This is Holes, Chapter 12. Welcome to Chapter 12, people. Uh, this is the general senses. Yes, I was exposing you to MC Hammer, one of the all-time greats. Uh, wore the most amazing pants. Yes, I know. Uh, I wish I owned a pair. Uh, general senses. So they're all over the body. Specialized senses. Uh, eyes and ears are the specialized senses. Um, and when we say generalized senses, you think of touch and pain and temperature. There's also senses inside the body, the visceral senses and so on. So we have sensory receptors that help us collect information from the outside environment. And then they send impulses up to the brain. And when we say a sensation, that's the feeling that uh, occurs when the brain becomes aware of that. Uh, you may have a stimulus that can create a sensation, but you don't have the sensation unless the brain actually uh, integrates that message. Uh, <clears throat> and then you have a certain perception. Uh, that's how you interpret or perceive that specific uh, sensation or that information. So this is the uh, pathway. You'll see this uh, slide again at the very end <coughs> Excuse me, uh, of this chapter. But uh, smell, taste, sight, and hearing, all the general pathways that they take uh, and where they go um, in order to process that information and allow you to interact with your environment. So first, types of receptors, chemoreceptors. Uh, respond to chemical concentration. So, for example, something that's spicy will release hydrogen ions uh, in large amounts, uh, making, it, making it, uh, acidic to you. And as a result, uh, that uh, is a chemical change. Not only will you sense it through your chemoreceptors, but you will also sense it in your nociceptors as you respond to that tissue damage created by that acid. Thermoreceptors are changes in temperature, whether they be hot or cold. Mechanoreceptors are mechanical forces. Ow. And photoreceptors are changes to light. Look away from the light. Okay. Sensory impulses. So this is sort of the general progression of how it goes. You get stimulation of the actual receptor itself, um, which causes a change in the, re in the receptor potential. Again, as you know, sodium will enter the cell and cause it to start to become positive inside. Uh, this is the graded electrical current, uh, and it reflects the intensity. So the stronger the stimulus, the more sodium channels will open and the more sodium will enter into the cell. And if enough occurs, if there's enough of a depolarization, then it will be strong enough to, to cause an action potential so the message will actually be sent. Um, so the receptor, if it's part of a neuron, the membrane potential can generate action potential. I said that. Um, and if it's not part of a neuron, then it can be transferred to a neuron to elicit uh, an action potential. It depends on the sensation. Uh, and then the peripheral nerves, the uh, penis will send it to the uh, CNS to be analyzed and interpreted. Um, projection, this is uh, when the brain projects the sensation back to the apparent source. So you know that something just hits you in the arm there because your sensory neuron sent it to your brain, but then there's this idea of projection that sends it back to that area that was um, hit or whatever you want to imagine uh, that pinpoints the region that the stimulus occurred. Um, now, you have the ability to ignore unimportant stimuli uh, men especially have this ability, uh, sorry women, and it involves a decreased response to a certain stimulus. The stimulus is still strong and it's still occurring, making sure I'm recording, um, it's still occurring, but um, your response to it is diminished. It, you start to ignore it essentially, okay? Uh, because the impulses become less and less frequent, you slowly stop sending them and you eventually ignore them. Uh, this can be with vision, with smell, with uh, touch, with pain, and so on. Um, and in order to feel it, you need a stronger stimulus um, because the cell, the receptors, have been hyperpolarized or taken further away from threshold, more negative than rest. Uh, now, the general senses, these are skin muscles and then the uh, joints and in the viscera as well. And there's three groups. The extra-receptive senses, these are what you normally think of as the uh, senses um, on the body surface. Uh, and then we have visceral receptive senses, which are the ones you don't think of, such as uh, detecting blood pressure changes and a meal that has uh, entered the body, so you start to release uh, HCL, for example, uh, acid in the stomach. Uh, and then proprioceptive senses, proprio is always uh, movement, um, so this is changes uh, with muscles and tendons. <coughs> Let's start with touch and pressure. So there's free nerve endings. 
These are found uh, very typically on epithelial tissues, such as in the skin, of course. They're the simplest type of receptors, and they sense itching. And my arm actually does itch right now. I don't know why. Uh, then there's Meisner's corpuscles, which are uh, found very commonly in hairless portions. They detect very fine touch. Uh, and they can distinguish very easily between two points on the skin we'll see next week uh, in lab. And then we have Piscinian corpuscles, which sense deep pressure. They're uh, deeper in the, um, uh, in the skin uh, and also in uh, tendons and ligaments, and they detect heavy pressure and also vibrations. So here we can see up at the top, uh, we see free nerve endings, and then we also see Meisner's corpuscles, which are just there right in the uh, top of the dermis. And then you have uh, deeper down into the dermis or even into the subcutaneous layer, you're going to have Piscinian corpuscles. Uh, as you can see, structurally, they're very different here. Temperature, so there's temp uh, sensors that respond to warm, okay? Uh, anywhere from between 77 and about 113, uh, you respond to warm. And then you have cold from about uh, 50 to 68. That feels cold for you. And anything beyond that, you just start to perceive pain. You can't actually distinguish between warm and cold. So if you put uh, dry ice on you, eventually it will burn you. And part of the reason is because uh, you can't tell that it's cold. It feels hot, cold, you're not really sure. Um, because it is uh, beyond these warm or cold receptors. And then the free nerve endings uh, sense pain for us here. And they're all over the body, of course. The brain, we know, doesn't have any pain receptors. And uh, these nociceptors, which are free nerve endings, can uh, be stimulated by tissue damage from chemicals, like I mentioned, uh, high concentrations of hydrogen ions are making something acidic, mechanical forces, um, and also extremes in temperature, as I mentioned. Uh, they adapt very little. Um, so you're going to continue to feel pain and always feel pain, uh, which is a good thing. It tells you to stop doing something. There is visceral pain. Uh, you do have pain receptors found in the viscera, which can produce certain sensations, but they're more difficult to localize. So uh, it's not as easy as getting a cut on your hand and knowing that the cut is there um, because they respond a little differently. They're not well localized is the way to say it. And they cause what is called referred pain. So uh, instead of feeling pain in that organ, you feel the pain in a different region of the body, different part of the body. And that's because the, uh, they share a common pathway, the sensory nerves as they go up to the brain they share a common pathway, so they end up stimulating multiple regions. So here you see, which is actually quite interesting, for example, if you have neck pain on this side or pain here, uh, you may have pain associated with your liver or gallbladder. Here on this side is lung and diaphragm. Heart is very characteristically known as going all the way down the arm. Uh, some people typically get left arm weakness when they're starting to have a heart attack, one of the characteristic signs. Um, you'll also notice kidney is all over the low body. Appendix, you know, is localized there. Uh, actually. Appendix is uh, pretty good. Um, but in general, these are some areas where you have referred pain because they share certain the same pathways. Now, pain. There's two types of pain. We know there's acute pain and there's chronic pain. Acute pain is, ow, it's sharp, it's uh, immediate. Um, this is from uh, myelinated fibers that conduct the impulses very rapidly. In fact, it's about 20 meters per second. And this is sharp pain. It's very well localized. This is the uh, F-bomb kind of pain right when it happens. Chronic pain, on the other hand, these are from C fibers, um, and these are uh, fibers that are unmyelinated, so the signal doesn't travel as fast, or very lightly myelinated. These may be going uh, about two meters per second, um, and so this is more of the dull, aching pain, and it's often more difficult to pinpoint. Uh, both types of pain suck. They're both necessary and important, but that doesn't make them any more fun. Uh, so how does pain make its way to the brain? Well, it goes through the reticular formation. And then it goes through the hypothalamus and the thalamus, and then the thalamus directs it to its certain area of the cerebral cortex, um, part of the uh, sensory cortex. And then there's also sometimes emotion going through the, uh, um, the limbic centers and so on. The thalamus really allows you to be aware of the pain because it directs the pain, the, the sensation into certain areas. And then the cerebral cortex itself judges the intensity of the pain. Uh, it helps to pinpoint the source of the pain. And then, of course, it routes it through the uh, amygdala as part of the limbic center. Uh, limbic system where you have this emotional response and then the motor response as well to uh, respond. Um, now you do have some ability to block pain. Uh, there's a chemical you create called an enkephalin, uh, which is stimulated by levels of serotonin. So both of them will be released and they both, uh, uh, enkephalins block the synaptic transmission from the presynaptic cell in the, in the um, peripheral nervous system as it's making its way to the CNS, it's blocked uh, from crossing the synapse by these enkephalins. Now, 
Endorphins are very similar to enkephalins, but endorphins are actual neurotransmitters in the synapse that are inhibitory. They're found within the central nervous system, within the brain, um, and they inhibit the pain sensation. So sometimes people, w there be questions about shock. How does someone lose an arm and not feel pain and is able to, to return, uh, get themselves to the hospital before they start to feel the pain, for example? And this is due to uh, these three things, enkephalins, serotonin, and endorphins. Uh, proprioceptors, so they are a type of uh, mechanoreceptors, and they send information to the CNS about the position and length, so where your muscles are and are they contracted or not, uh, as well as the tension. Um, so the types of pr proprioceptors, piscinian corpuscles, we saw them in the skin as well uh, for deep pressure and vibrations. They're also found in the joints, actually directly within the joint. Uh, then we also have muscle spindles, which are wrappings, uh, you'll see in a picture here, um, they're a type of stretch receptor in the muscle itself. And then Golgi tendon organs are uh, stretch receptors in the Golgi uh, itself. So here you see this uh, nerve ending wrapped around this myofiber. Um, that is the muscle spindle, uh, and it's going to send the sensory message back, uh, relaying information about that muscle. And you see the same thing largely with the Golgi tendon organ. It's just found in the, uh, in the tendon where it uh, syncs with the muscle cells themselves. Another picture showing you the same thing. Uh, giving you awareness of uh, your muscles. And lastly, just a summary of all of them. Free nerve endings detect changes in pressure. Uh, you also have, uh, there are mechanoreceptors. We also have free nerve endings that are thermoreceptors, changes in temperature, uh, hot and cold, and we talked about those. Um, and then we have free nerve endings that are nociceptors, pain, and they detect tissue damage. Um, and this is basically the same chart we showed in the previous uh, lecture when we finished up the nervous system. Um, but you get the idea. This is a review of all the different types of general receptors. Okay, and we're done for today. I'm out. <laughs>